so just talking about your own experiences as entrepreneurs, what would have been um, like your the biggest surprises, for example, uh, for you? Biggest surprises. That's a tough one. I mean, I think, I think that you know that so much of the job and like so much of what you care about so early on is the employees coming and like the vision is still so important, obviously, and delivering to the customer is something incredible is important, but you realize that that's going to happen because you have really talented people because you don't scale. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of already a year in seeing that so much of like what you're doing is about, you know, inspiring and like helping people get coached right and better. Um, mm -hmm. I think that was, a, that is a surprise and that's something that is awesome but I didn't recognize it would happen so soon. Yeah, and what have been, uh, like what uh, has been, have there been sort of unpleasant surprises, I guess, or? <laughs> it's a stressful raising thing. Mo raising money was. <laughs> raising money was painful. We learned a lot during that process. Yeah. In retrospect, sure. everything feels fine, but raising money was really tough. I think um, it's always painful, like even, you know, after you've started a couple companies, no matter what, it somehow is always <laughs> a terrible process. You know, I, I think that the bottom line is that on a, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, like it's stressful, it's hard, and it's, you could have never imagined kind of how much you were going to care about something, so then how much you take things like personally into heart and so how... Someone, someone rejects you and yeah, you just sort of feel exactly. like, yeah, you feel But it's still like the best forlorn. job ever. Yeah. So yeah. even on like its worst <laughs> Wouldn't days... Wouldn't give it up for anything, yeah. that's for sure, but um, we've learned so much in the last year. Um, comparing, you know, we graduated business school in 2010 and looking at our friends that um, went to typical jobs and, and how they feel a year in and it feels like a lifetime for us in terms right. of the learnings that so we've fast. had and like how much we've grown um, as as leaders and as business people. And so, so if people are watching uh, who are, let's say, student college or business school students or whatever or, um, and thinking about starting a company, like, you know, do you, like, for example, a question I get a lot is should I go and work a, for five years in the beauty industry, or do you think you should just jump in, or like, what do you? <laughs> well, for us, it wasn't necessary. Um, I think our <laughs> advice is figure out how to test it. Um, and major in computer science. <laughs> That's our new like joking. <laughs> well, if you haven't event. done that already, yeah. um, figure out how to test it That's without needing to know It's unfortunate that you know, computer science um, enrollment is so low in this country. Because people think that, that it's all getting outsourced to India. Well, they don't realize it that it's not. like a great, first of all, there's a ton here. Secondly, it's yeah. a great foundation to go do other things Absolutely. Like that, you don't you know, have that to aren't like just sitting in front of a computer but, all day. But I mean, on the flip <laughs> side, we built our beta site on WordPress with a shopping plugin. Like the mm -hmm. barriers are not that high to have an idea and be able to test at least like the kernel yeah. of it. Um, that's so, one of the great things that's happened now, actually, is that the, sort yeah. of the stack has gotten so built out that mm -hmm. like you can do, you can detest stuff very quickly. It sounds yeah. like you guys are big fans of the sort of lean startup. Um, yeah, so we are, and it, and it helped us get to launch, but I, I have to say that it was, it's part of the reason we didn't hire fast enough, because um, mm -hmm. we were so used to doing it all ourselves and running lean, but once you have product market fit and you're growing like crazy, you have to be able to switch gears, and all of a sudden you need to know that it's okay to spend, it's okay to test things you know, with bigger budgets, mm -hmm. um, and we had, to, we had to learn how to make that transition. Um, but we're still very much a test and learn Culture, How do you balance the test and learn with kind of your the intuitive side? I mean, because if you just yeah. do too much testing and learning, right, like you're never going to do anything. Yeah, I think that fortunately, like the amount of decisions you have to make in a day balances it nicely for you. Because if you 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 don't have time to test and learn everything, so you're just forced I think to. for us, it's like we test and learn the big questions that we have that we don't feel like we have good intuition on that we feel like this really would be us kind of guessing, mm -hmm. and we're not going to guess. But I um, think like what's exciting about our business is the mix between the creativity and the like the data hard science part of it, right? Like mm -hmm. we're choosing these products based on what a former beauty editor thinks uh, someone will like, um, but then there's so many metrics that we could put around who gets that product, what did they think of it, um, and I think that's what makes it so exciting being able to mix the gut with the science. the data. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, um, we're out of time, so thanks so much for being here. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks.